Ever since I released the playthrough of my 2018 game Extraction Point, viewers have been asking me how I made the cutscenes. I've already replied to some of the comments and explained the basics, but as I keep getting asked, I've decided to make a video that covers this topic in more depth, to explain how you can do the same, and why, very soon, you might not have to. The one level demo of Extraction Point is bookended by two cinematic but drastically different sequences. At the beginning there's a two minute pre-rendered cutscene showing a helicopter being shot down, and at the end there's a rudimentary in-game cinematic where the player meets the game's antagonist, the Shah, for the first time. Let's start with the cutscene. The purpose of opening a game with a cutscene is to provide context on both the world of the story and its characters in a way you couldn't do exclusively from the player's perspective. In this instance, the video had to explain where we are, introduce the player and the antagonist, and show the inciting incident, the helicopter being shot down. There was no way I could stage all of this in-game, as Game Guru was too limited and I'm just not that great at scripting. Instead, I opted to create a pre-rendered video that could do all of these things quickly. This meant I also had the freedom to rely on techniques I'd normally use in my day job as a videographer. This is good practice anytime you want to make a video, but especially so here. Having a script gave me a blueprint to work from, and allowed me to work out what shots I'd need to tell the story efficiently. I recorded myself saying the script to work out roughly how much footage of each character I would need. Details are sketchy, there are many rumours, but we know the locals call him the Shah. It also helped that I'd picked out some great music before anything had been shot, allowing me to figure out the right pacing I'd need to match the music. Count yourself lucky, Private. Pashnar is not a region you'd want to cross on foot. The shots in the opening cutscene of Extraction Point were created using one of three methods. Let's look at each individually. Many of the shots were recorded inside Game Guru itself, a style known as machinima. Here I used a screen recorder to capture the actual character model seen in game. I used some simple Lua scripts to help me. This one removes the HUDs from your screen so they aren't present during a recording. This one loops a sit animation for one of the soldier characters. And this one loops a talking animation. I changed the speed of the player camera and removed any camera wobble to make it smooth. Adjusting your frame of view is like adjusting your focal length on a camera. Use it to frame your shots. Using this method, you can't use your mouse to pan or tilt the camera during the shot as this happens in steps and will look jerky and unnatural. Instead, use your movement keys and reduce player movement speed to create slow dolly movements or push-ins on characters. You may also find it helpful to turn off physics on objects and characters you want to get really close to so the player capsule doesn't collide with these objects and stop you getting too close. Some shots were simply too complicated to be done in Game Guru. For these I used 3D modelling software and rendered them entirely separately. In this shot of the Chinook, I imported several characters from Game Guru and just had them positioned and posed inside the helicopter roughly where I needed them. The camera never gets too close, so it wasn't necessary for me to animate them. I also made sure to use the same skybox as the actual level to help marry the shots to the rest of the sequence. For some shots I wanted to rely on Game Guru for the environment, but add complicated elements to the shot that Game Guru couldn't easily handle on its own. Here I filmed plate shots within Game Guru, then rendered additional 3D elements in my 3D modelling software, and used Adobe After Effects to composite the two together. Sometimes I combined these with stock footage assets like explosions and smoke to add more realism. Finally, I added sound effects, licensed the atmospheric music I'd found from Audio Network, and paid several freelance voiceover artists to record lines for the cutscene. One of the strange idiosyncrasies of Game Guru since the DirectX 11 update is you now have to separately specify a video and an audio track to be played together. So when it came to the final export, I rendered a mute MP4 file and then rendered all the sound as a separate stereo OG file. At the end of the game, the player meets the game's villain, the Shah. The Shah runs a simple script that basically plays little sequences of animation frames one after another in order. 
I wrote down the frame numbers of the animations I wanted, then simply called them in one by one in order to match the voiceover. Again, this took days of careful tinkering to get the right speed for each gesture and to match the vocal performance. Stock GameGoo characters have a limited range of animations to choose from, so I often had to get creative with the speed of the animations too. I added extra lines of code to move the Shah forward and rotate him, although I was never fully happy with how this turned out. So there you have it, that's how I made the cinematics in Extraction Point. I combined my existing knowledge of filmmaking and visual effects with new skills I learnt in Lua scripting and had invaluable advice and support from the Game Guru community. It took a long time, and it was really hard, but that's always been the only way to make cutscenes in Game Guru. Until now. For the last few weeks, I've been collaborating with scripting genius Armen Moses on a brand new set of tools for Game Guru to allow you to make in game cutscenes with ease. We're still hard at work on it, so without giving too much away, all I'll say is much of what I struggled to do in Extraction Point in 2018 can now be done live, in game, and without touching hardly any code. We're excited to share more news about this innovative pack in 2021, so stay tuned for more news and demonstrations in the new year. Until then, thanks for watching. <laughs>